Hello everyone! In this tutorial we are going to make a physics-based game using Wade. So we need to navigate to clockworkchili.com forward slash Wade. Uh, this will load up the editor. And we want to go ahead and click skip tutorials. And we need a name for our project, so I'm just going to call this Angry Cannon. And we click create. So this opens our project. Now it's a bit empty and we need some art assets in here. These will be included in the description below. So I'm just going to go ahead, click add files, and I'm going to drag all my files in. Very nice. Now I'm going to set the scene properties to 960 by 540 resolution, both the min and the max. This is just to match the background image we've made. And then I'm going to drag in our background image, which is day.png. I go to properties, make sure the position is 0, 0. I name it background. I go to sprites and I set the layer to 5. And we're just going to quickly save and run just to make sure that everything is working. And indeed, we have our object. Now, the reason I set the layer to 5 is I want everything that isn't going to change, so this background is static, there are no moving parts, on a layer, out the way somewhere, so we never have to redraw this layer. Once it's drawn once, that's it. The, it never has to be drawn again, so it just improves performance if we keep all this stuff on the same layer. Now, I'm going to drag the stock of the cannon in. There we go. And that's a bit big. So I'm going to make it a lot smaller and put it there. That should do. Now we need to set the layer of this to 5 as well. And I'm going to give everything names. It's not necessary. Usually we only give things names if we need to reference them later on using way to get scene object. But it also keeps things neat up here. It just makes it very easy to select what I want very quickly. And the last thing we need to drag in for now is the cannon barrel. Now, that looks a bit comical, so we'll scale it down. And I'm just going to put it there for now. Again, we can change it. And I know a real cannon would be more like that, but we're short on horizontal space. So I'm just going to put it there. Now, I'm going to rename this to cannon, but this is going to stay on layer 1. That is because the barrel is going to move to point to where you're aiming at with your mouse cursor. So we save the program once again. Fantastic. We're going to have a lot of moving objects in this game, so we need to include Wade Physics. Now to do that, we go up here and we click this button. It looks like an atom and when you hover over it, it says physics on a tooltip. So select that, click OK, and hopefully wade.physics.js should appear here in your project. Excellent. Now currently, this cannon has nothing to shoot at. We are going to change this. So I'm just going to drag in a barrel. Oh, that's a bit big. Scale it down. Uh, still a bit big. There we go. Now we're going to duplicate this a lot, so we need to get it right first time, really. I go to Properties, and I give it a name, Barrel. Now this will be staying on layer 1 because it is also dynamic. Now the new bit is we go to behaviors. Now here we have the option of adding a physics object. This is because we included Wade Physics just a moment ago. So I click the plus and that adds the behavior to the scene object. Now body type, that needs to be dynamic otherwise our barrel will not move. Restitution needs to be about 0.5, you can play with this value, but what it actually does is it changes how high the barrel will bounce when it hits the ground, so a value of 1 means it will just keep bouncing to the same height, it will never lose energy. In fact, I'm going to show you that, but first to do so we need some ground to bounce off, so I add a new scene object. I'm just going to drag it really big, and I want it quite close to there, that should be close enough. I click on it, behaviors, add a physics object, and this one will stay as static. 
but the restitution value for the ground is going to be 0.5. In Wade, when two objects collide, it takes the highest restitution value. So if the ground was 1, it wouldn't matter if we changed the value on anything else. Everything would have like perfect collisions, everything would bounce really high. And you're about to see what that looks like, because it's kind of hard to describe these movements. I'm just going to name the ground quickly, keep things neat. Okay, so if I save and I drag the barrel up there and then we run, we see the barrel falls down like that and it stops. That's what I want. If I left the restitution value at 1, this is what would happen. The barrel would just keep jumping and it would never lose any energy because it is undergoing a perfect collision. We don't want that because it looks a bit ridiculous, so 0 0.5 is what the restitution should be. Excellent. Now I'm just going to create a little tower of these. Now if we mess up the barrel at all, we might have to redo this because I'm duplicating this object and changing all of these manually would be a bit annoying. So we just go ahead and create a little tower. Now you, you can spend a lot more time on this than I do. I'm just trying to get it somewhat close. And you've got to get it close enough, otherwise the tower will collapse when it's created. Uh, that could be a bit of a problem. Okay, let's try that and see how that goes. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, please change, tell me I changed this to dynamic. Good. I got scared for a minute there. So we have our tower of barrels. What we need now is a cannonball, so I'm just going to drag this into the scene and call it ball. Now you can see with the naming on the left here, this is why we name things. So the things I care about are these simple names, whereas the barrels have got huge lists of clones after them. So if we go to the ball, make that a physics object also, make it dynamic, but we need one extra step. We need to go to shape type and type circle. Now the restitution of the cannonball, we're going to have at 0.5 as well. But it also has these two other properties, linear damping and angular damping. I'll demonstrate those very shortly by just colliding it. So the cannonball collides and notice how long it rolls. And the rotation is not slowing down. So similarly, zero and one, zero means it'll stop instantly. One means it'll keep going forever. Angular damping we want at about 0.2. This will just stop the cannonball rolling. And linear, this will stop it moving sideways once it's collided with the ground, so it's basically friction. I'm going to try about 0.5. So we run our program, and there obviously the result is very different. The cannonball goes nowhere near as far, and it comes to a stop. But unfortunately at the moment, the cannonball and these barrels have the same mass. So when they collide it's not really getting the effect we want. In reality, a cannonball is a lot heavier than most objects it's going to be hitting, and it's also traveling a lot faster, so we need to change the density of the cannonball. So we go to this, and we set the density to 10, and we try that. Now, it's hard to say that that had a bigger effect, so I'm going to put it up to something ridiculous, like a 1,000, just so you can see what difference it's made. Now clearly there, a lot more energy was imparted and the barrels went flying. Now we're going to go back to the value of 10. We might change this later, but remember the cannonball will be moving at a fast velocity and it will be hitting this tower sideways, so it'll probably be enough. If it isn't, we can change it later. Now the next thing I want to add is a power bar. So when we fire the cannon, we're going to have it, you hold the mouse down, and the longer you hold down, the more power you have. And so the shot will go further, or at least that's the idea. So I'm going to create a new scene object. There we go. I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to call it power bar. Now I want to move this to the very top in the center. So X position zero, we'll try minus 200. Uh, I actually want it a bit higher, minus 230. Whoops, minus 23. I'm going to make it very narrow and quite long. So this is the bar that will charge up. There we go. I'm just going to save the app there. Now, the next bit, I've kind of cheated a little bit. I went away and I wrote some code because, to be honest, 
It's too complicated to explain in this tutorial. This tutorial is about physics and making a fun physics game, not about graphics shaders. We do have a shaders tutorial, and I encourage you to check that out if you want to know how the next bit works, but don't worry, you can just copy and paste it. I will be including it in the assets file attached to this video. So I need to click on custom pixel shader here, and I'm just going to go ahead and open this shader that I made before. And I'm going to paste that in. I'll make the window a little bit bigger so you can see it here. Just if you want to copy it right now, there it is. It does look a bit crazy, I know. Now this shader needs a value. So here I'm going to add a custom property to the sprite. Ooh, not like that. I'm going to type value here. It's going to be a float and its initial value should be zero. And just because I'm ultra paranoid, I'm going to have 0.0. .0. So We'll see what this does in a minute, but basically it handles the rendering. It draws this currently white rectangle depending on what this value is. So when this value is 1, we should end up with a crazy effect. But we don't yet because I haven't clicked always draw. That needs to be on. Excellent. I think that's correct. Let's just save and run our program. There we go. Yes, that's exactly what I want. Good. So I set this value back to zero. Um, there we go. Uh, we don't need to be in here anymore anyway. So we're going to go to functions and we are going to go to on update. Um, where is on update? It's right at the bottom. So first of all, we need to get the sprite that we just created. And we can do that very simply. Oops getting slightly confused so this dot get sprite and we set that to sprite now we need to increment the value when the mouse is down in weight and but we don't want it to go above one or that might mess the shader up so i have to be a bit careful here so we do sprite dot value is less than one and weight dot is mouse down is true so if the value is less than one and the mouse is down, we want to increment the value. Very, very simple. So sprite.value plus equals, we'll try about 0.2, I'm not sure how quick it's going to be. And then we also need to make sure it doesn't go above 1, so the way I'm going to do this is sprite value greater than 1. So if it's greater than 1, I just want to return 1. If it's not, return what it actually is, because it's not quite one and it'll keep getting incremented. So hopefully, if we save this and run, um, we should have nothing visible. Ah, apart from a tiny little green line, that's a problem with my shader. Um, I'm going to go and fix that now very briefly. It's not perfect, my shader, so I'm just going to remove a zero from there. See if that fixes my problem. Yes, it does. Excellent. So... We see our on update again, we run the code, and when I hold the mouse down, whoa, instantly that. Oh, I think we need a zero there, 0 0.02, it went instantly to the full value, which isn't what we want. There we go, that's what I want. Now at the moment, even when I mouse up, this just goes on forever, so we need to deal with that, but that's going to happen next in the app when we actually fire the cannon, but so far our cannon can only shoot in a straight line and it can't even fire. So really we want the cannon to aim at the mouse cursor. So that's the next thing we need to do. Okay, so a lot of the code now is going to be done in Wade, uh, sorry, app.js, so I just need to make some space here. And we want this nice and big so we can see it very clearly. Now all of this is going to happen inside the callback for load scene. We do not want to be messing around with scene objects before load scene is completed as the object might not exist yet. Who knows? So we need to do wade.app on mouse move. That'll be the first thing we do. So we're gonna handle aiming the cannon. And that looks right to me. There we go. So we need to get the cannon. First of all, we need to get a reference to it. So we can do way.get scene object, and I think we called it canon. We'll soon find out if I'm wrong. Now we need to do a bit of maths, so it's kind of annoying, I know, maths, people don't like it, but it's honestly not that difficult. 
So we're going to get the displacement between the mouse cursor and the cannon. So that's, in simple terms, that's the distance. So if the mouse cursor was on this cannonball, we are getting the distance from here to here. And I want you to imagine basically an imaginary line or maybe an arrow pointing towards that cannonball. So you've got a line. Just see that line in your mind. Matrix level stuff here. So I need to do a little vector calculation here. So I'm going to subtract one vector from the other. And this will get me the distance between them. So data dot screen position. That's the current mouse position and canon dot get position. So this gives us the displacement. So it's got an X and a Y value. And we can imagine this as an imaginary line between those two points. Excellent. Now we can calculate the angle that that line is at. So imagine horizontal is zero. This line is going to be almost at 45 degrees if the mouse cursor was on the cannonball, maybe a bit less. So we need to be able to calculate the angle between the horizontal and our mouse cursor. To do that, we do var angle equals math dot a tan 2 displacement dot y. This is why we needed to calculate the displacement dot x. If you've done trigonometry in school, you could draw a triangle and see that this does actually work out, but just trust me on it for now. Unless I've got it wrong, of course, then you don't want to trust me. So we're going to save that and run, and hopefully, fingers crossed, yes, our cannon does indeed move. Now, at the moment, we can hold the mouse down, um, but no cannonball is generated, and this just flashes for all eternity. Not exactly what we want, but not too far off. So the next thing we need to do is, well, we don't want that cannonball to drop, so let's make that a template. So we click on it. We want to go to properties and select template. That just means that when we run, the cannonball should not appear. Good. But we're going to use that and we're going to clone it. I'm just going to drag that off scene somewhere. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, of course, we need to do this on on mouse up. So on mouse down happens in the power bar. So on mouse up equals function. Now this is another bit, might be a little bit complicated, but hopefully not too much. So I'm going to do it in two stages. I'm going to do a simple version, then I'm going to add in some extra bits that we need later. So the first thing we need to do is get the power bar. The reason for this is we need to get um, that value that we defined before so we know what power we're at. Are we fully charged, ready to really throw the cannonball out, or do we not have much power? Are we doing a more precise shot? There we go. So that gets me the sprite. <coughs> Pardon me. Now I need to get the rotation of the cannon sprite. So remember, we just made the cannon rotate. So, ooh, rotation. Rotation equals canon dot get sprite dot get uh, rotation. There we go. Now the next bit again, a little bit more maths. We need to draw kind of an imaginary line along the length of this cannon barrel, and we're going to use that as our vector. So I say the position. I sorry, I should say we're going to use that to spawn the cannonball because we need to spawn the cannon. Ball, but we don't know which way the cannon is going to be pointing, so we have to get which direction the cannon is pointing. That's what this rotation value is. We then need to draw an imaginary line from the back of the cannon to the front and rotate that by the same amount, so we can then place it that far along. I know that doesn't really make sense, I'm sorry, but it's quite difficult to describe. Um, maybe if I show... No, I'll just go and write the code and you can see what it does. So wade, oops, wade dot vec to dot rotate. Now this is the imaginary line, so it's going to have a length. So imagine it starts from zero zero. So the middle of the screen zero zero. We're going to draw a line about that long, so roughly the same length as the cannon. And y is zero. Oops, lots of little mistakes. Oops, wrong thing. So now 
we need to do some addition. Add in place, what this does is it takes the second vector and adds it to the first one. So position, that's our 120 long line we've just drawn. And then we do position, And I'll just quickly explain this. So we've got the position of the cannon, which will be right in the center here. Then we're adding our 120 long line. So that would spawn the cannonball about here, which is where we want. But of course the cannon might be pointing a different direction. And that is what this rotation does. Okay, excellent. In fact, I don't know why I've wrote rotation there. That should be rotate. Always good to check your code. So we get it. So if the cannon's rotated, it rotates our invisible line. So it places the ball in the correct place. Anyway. But at the moment, we're not actually creating the ball. We're just sorting out this imaginary line that we need. So let's go ahead and create the cannonball itself. I think that would be a good next step. So var ball equals wade.get scene object ball. This is the ball up here. Remember, we just set it to a template object. And then we do dot clone. Uh, then we simply do ball.set position and we calculated the position before. That's what all our rotation was for. So pause. And we do wade.add scene object ball true. Very good. And one more thing we should probably do we should just set the power bar value to zero for the next shot, otherwise, it will never ever go away. So if I save and run this, let's see what happens. Okay. I hold the mouse down and I leave go, nothing happens, or at least nothing visible, I couldn't see. So clearly we've done something wrong, so we need to check our code. So we get the power bar, get the sprite, get the cannon, got the sprite, get the rotation. That all looks correct. Let's see, have I done something silly? Pause, cannon.get position. Add in place, that looks correct. Get scene object dot clone ball dot set position. Hmm. I think that should work. So clearly, I've done something silly. Is this called Canon? Let's just check the names. Canon. Yep. And this is called ball. So. Oh wait a minute. Can. Oh, I am silly. I am very silly. We didn't actually get the reference to the cannon. I am very sorry. That's a stupid mistake. It's because I'd done it. I'd done this line up here and I forgot we're in a different function now. Okay, so now we have the cannon. That should work. Oh, or maybe not. This is going well. Sprites have invalid coordinates. That's not good. That is really, really not good. Get sprite, get rotation. Wow, I have really messed this up quite badly. It's a new achievement. Ball dot set position. Pause. Pause is set there. Ball tree. Come on, it'll be a stupid mistake somewhere, I just can't see it. Oh my god, I've looked at it, look. <clears throat> okay, so I declared my straight line, but I wasn't actually rotating it by anything. So that's the angle we need to rotate it by. Lots of silly little mistakes. So hopefully now, again, fingers crossed. Yay, that's better. So when I click, the ball appears at the right place. Um, as you may notice though, it is just falling on the floor um, with no velocity and we're not doing anything with this power value. So we need to do something about that. And what we're going to do is add a velocity. So I'm going to create that here because I need to get the direction before we mess around with this pause value too much. So I'm going to do weight.vec2.normalize pause. This basically gives me a line that's going the right direction, but it's only got a length of one. So 
I can multiply that by whatever I want to get the right power value, and that's what I want to do. So if I go down here a bit, um, I think we'll do this below here. I'm going to do way dot vec two dot scale in place, and again any weighed vector function that's got in place it means it affects the first value so we take the velocity with a length of one i'm going to multiply it by a big number and i'm going to times it by the value of the power bar so the power bar value can be zero to one so if it's one obviously we get the full 1500 if it's zero it won't move at all the ball will just drop on the floor like it did before now we have to do something here that's a little bit hacky in my book, but I'm afraid it's necessary. So I just have to set that up. We need to set the ball velocity, and we can't just do this without the set timeout, because if we do, it'll override the physics. So we have to initialize the physics first, and then set the ball's velocity to what we just calculated here. So now, if we save, and we run our program, and we do it, Yay! That was actually very powerful. And if I only hold it down for a second, the cannonball doesn't go very far. If I hold it down for a long time, it really blasts the cannonball out. Um, I'm just going to go to the behaviors for the cannonball and reduce the density to about 5 because that looked way too powerful to me. Let's try it again. So full power. That's not bad. That was a full power shot. So what if we do less power? Yes, okay, I quite like that. I think that's all right. But it's it's so much more fun to just do this. Oh, I was going to shoot it in midair, but I missed. <laughs> anyway, so now we need an objective to this game. At the moment, we don't have that. But I'm just going to do it by adding a circle on the top of this stack, which we have to knock to the ground. Very simple. So we need to save our project. I'll just reorganize this a bit. <coughs> Pardon me. And we will add a new scene object. Now I'm going to set this to procedural circle. It's just going to be white for the moment. I mean, you can use a sprite for this if you want, but I don't happen to have one with me for this. So I'm just going to put it there on the top. I really should change the color of that. Should I quickly do it in the shader? Maybe. Debatable. Yes, let's go ahead and do it. Ah, we don't need a custom property. Okay, GL frag. Ah, not clicking. Um, let's not make it red, let's make it yellow. Oops. I've just realized what I might have turned this circle into a square, have I? Yeah, okay, I probably shouldn't have gone around and messed with this um, shader. It's a bad idea. So yeah, we're not going to do that. It's just going to cause problems and be confusing for you. So ignore the shader again. There's a shader tutorial if you want to check that out. It would be cool. I'm just going to change the name of this to objective. So what we're going to do is if this hits the ground, we want to restart the game. Like that is the goal. So I'm going to change the behaviors. We need to add the physics object behavior like we did before. Dynamic object. And we want restitution 0.2. We'll make this a low one. We don't want it to bounce very much. And we need to change the shape type to circle. So let's have a go with this. Let's click run. So that is white. I probably should have used a better sprite for that, but it's okay. So... Oh. So when this happens, when it hits the ground, we want the game to restart. That is the goal. So obviously it's a very simple goal. You can make something a lot flashier than this. And I'm just going to set this up now. So if this touches the ground, let's do that bit. So we need to go to the objects on update function. And I'm going to do... There are actually two ways of doing this. There is a way you could check if it was colliding with the ground itself. And... Yes, actually, we'll, I'm going to do this the old way. So way dot get overlapping objects. I've not actually done this in a little while, so I'm a little bit scared about doing it. But I'm going to be brave. Uh, or, do, or do I really want to? No, I'm not going to do it that way. I keep changing my mind. 
Never mind, we'll do it a simple way. So var height equals wave dot get screen height over two. So that is the y value at the bottom of the screen. And basically when we are below that, then we've accomplished our goal or when we're touching that, I should say. So we need to get our position. If this dot position, no, sorry, get position dot y is greater than height. And let's give it a little bit of, let's just take 10 pixels off. Actually, sorry, no, we need to get the height of this sprite, which is, how big is the sprite? 64. We could use sprite dot get height here, but I'm just going to be a little bit hacky and I'm just going to take a little bit extra off. So I'm just going to say minus 70 there. So if we're bigger than the height, we want to clear the scene clear scene and we want to do um we want to run in it again then reload the scene so i'm not too sure if you can do this but this is going to be a good experiment i guess we're going to learn wait up dot in it do we think this will work ladies and gentlemen i really don't know i've i've legitimately never done it like this so this is going to be interesting oh, we have to get it to touch the ground ah it worked Although clearly we've got a bit too much. Yeah, I think we only want half the height of this. Yes, that's correct. And a little bit of extra. So let's try 40. That should be decent. Try it again. So we run our program. I have to make the pew pew noises. Of course you can add audio. Okay, still a little bit more. I'm being... Whoops. I clicked backspace. I wasn't meant to do that. So I'm just going to click forward. <laughs> wow. This this is a pro recording, guys. This is very pro recording. Okay, professional. So we click on this. Functions on update. Minus 40. Let's just change it to minus 32. Save and run. And this should work quite nicely. So I go ahead. Shoot. Pew. Excellent. So I believe... That is all we're going to do, guys. I think that's pretty good. We've got a nice little game. We've got some physics. And, of course, you can go crazy with cannonballs. I know it's gone out of the scene, but when it gets down, it will start again. So, really, the easy way to win this game is to just do this. Let's cheat. And it goes flying, and it's off the screen, and it's going, and it's going, and it's going, and it's gone. There we go. So, hopefully, you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. I know I made some mistakes here and there. And if you want to know how to do the shaders for this, remember, please check out our shader tutorial. It is very fun. Um, I think we make a water shader in that one. So that's pretty cool. But the general principles are the same. Uh, yeah. Uh, see you next time, everyone. Thanks for watching.